Mr. Mayor, I move that we uh, move to agenda item 10A, the resolution to the first meeting in September. So we have some more time to get, uh, do some research on the group. So we set up an email today with some more information. Okay. September 6th. my concern about sustainable growth, especially with our traffic patterns. The uh, on-ramp into town, my employees tell me, is exceptionally dangerous, rounding the the backup, and uh, we just uh, had the first read ordinance there for 231A, and I wanted to express my concern about the pace of growth, and that uh, we'd like to slow that down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
increase of what's going to be paid effect at that time. Can you hear me? Uh, 2017 budget, not much different from what's going on there. It's been canceled uh, maybe until uh, February of 2017. 135 golf carts have been registered to date, and we spoke about HOA concerns about residential parking when the new school opens. I don't have a technology to show you my agenda, but Anna's passing it around and we held off so it wouldn't blow away. So we're going to start my report by inviting Chief Asmus to come up and share with us a little history about National Night Out, what it means in our community. Thank you, Mayor, Council of Citizens. Um, tonight is National Night Out, as Councilmember Langford mentioned. And what National Night is, is about giving crime a going away party in our community. And people can get out, uh, meet their neighbors, um, talk about crime prevention efforts that you can do as a community. And I just want to uh, share something with you that this, that even though the uh, city is not this old yet, but this is the third annual National Night Out. Um, it's held each year on August 2nd. It's designed to heighten awareness of crime and drug prevention, strengthen neighborhood spirit, and build partnerships with law enforcement. Most importantly, it sends a message Good evening, Mayor and members of the council and the community. If it's not right, to stand up. Oops, there goes something. And, uh, not as light as Dorothy, so I will not go flying into the land of Oz. Um, so real quick, I wanted to just remind our council that August 16th is our uh, council retreat. It's at City Hall, and we will be sending out menus. Anne is going to be distributing the menus. I'm glad it wasn't my purse. I opened up my should not have for tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So fill out your menus, get it back to Anne, and we're going to be working on three ring binders. So we do have some information on all of the agenda. I think that we have some of the retreat. Um, I want to talk just a minute about traffic because we all know we're broke. So getting into and out of the city during the day, in the morning, during peak um, So there's three things that the city's undertaking. By CH2M Hill. They're going to be evaluating all of our transportation system that we have uh, right down in the corridor. some of the new residents, that those counts have changed. We want to make sure that we lose your is putting together two applications for two programs um, that 
that would be a grant application to a federal um, freight corridor program. Uh, the cost of that application is $4,900. CHM Hill was doing that also. and Appleway and Signal and in the course of that evaluation if we are successful then we could get funding for traffic signalization or traffic uh, signals at those intersections. So that's all in addressing some of the traffic needs of our community. The only thing I want to say is that we do get a lot of comments from residents. Uh, our residents are very concerned about and they always come to us with a solution. You know, put a roundabout there, put a traffic signal here, um, do this, do that. And I just want to say that we have to be able, we have to really look at everything in its totality because at the end of the, end of the day, everything has to work together. And I don't want to do an improvement that ends up causing other problems or that we're going to regret. So I, I'm kind of a fan of let's look at the whole system, let's identify what we need to do, and then attack it on a priority basis. So. Um, I want to keep moving just very quickly. I don't know if everyone's aware that we get free water from uh, Meadowood Golf Course to Water Pavilion Park. Um, but remember, nothing's free. And so a lot of people are using water from the golf course. And um, Jen Camp and her crew actually spent the night in Water Pavilion Park when the golf course is not needed. It's about 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, but along, those way, along that way, this year, the, the um, county experienced some pump problems and the pump went down and we all lost water for several days. So we offered to the county uh, to pay a part of the repair bill and I believe that's going to be in your vouchers tonight or in the next council meeting. Um, it's roughly about $1,700 and then also they are re-looking at their um, irrigation system and their pumping system over there and we've added, we want to add $2,500 to their consultant so their consultant can advise us system by installing our own pumping system. So that's another investment that we're making. Um, and then the last thing, is, but Avista has told us we will be the recipient of a charging station. Likely it's going to go right there. And on the back of my report, you guys will have a, a diagram that kind of looks like this. That's on the back of my report. You don't have to make a decision tonight, but something I want the council to think about is if it's a free charging station, um, then we get more um, contributions from this than we actually charge the car, then we get less of a contribution from Avista. But the bottom line is Avista has already told us that we will be the recipient of one of the charging stations. Their recommendation was to put it at Town Square. And then STA, we uh, mentioned the STA park and ride, they're likely going to be the recipient of a fast charge charging station so that people can um, get charges as they uh, park in the car and wait for the bus. So that is all together. As soon as I have more information, it will come back to you in terms of a contract to be approved for the VISTA. Right now they're working out the details of, of for the installation. So Mayor and Council, that's all I have to you. That's it. Oh, I have Jim Camp. Have Jim talk about the park. So we have a big event coming up this weekend. Uh, we have several activities for the teams. We're hoping to draw some teams in this year and get them to have a little bit of fun versus just the moms, dads, and the little ones. Uh, we've got Bear Garden Friday night, Saturday night. Uh, they host both nights to go along with the beer garden. And um, I think that's it. Pony rides. F family fun. Family fun, yeah. So we've got a, a bungee trampoline, we've got some bounce houses, pony rides, and a very large petting zoo. And Skyhawks is doing a push up pull up challenge for us at the Fallen Hero Circuit Course for some prizes. So it should be really interesting and really fun. Uh, very similar to last I'll come and say hi. We'll be floating around all three days. I, I, I know 
notice the That would be Trevor's handiwork and crew. Trevor, you here? Trevor! Trevor! <laughs> He's not paying attention. Oh, hi. Yeah, so what, what our crew does two weeks prior to the event is we, we go up there and he and the crew start cutting those fields down specifically just for the barefoot event. So they have a really nice plush playing surface with bare feet and they top dress with sand, fill in any holes. We take care of all the weeds to make sure there's no thistle of any kind. So there is a lot of prep that goes into this event for barefoot. And bubble ball soccer. Oh yeah, well, I forgot that. Hub is doing a bubble ball soccer. Did I miss anything? So everybody's invited, all you guys can come to the bubble ball yes. soccer. It's a, it's a blast. And all the events uh, this year are free to the public. There's no cost for the fun, all the family fun. Beer Garden obviously is not free. So, but the family fund is free. So get in, it's free. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One thing on uh, night out. Today I had the opportunity to start at 5 a.m. with uh, Waste Watch. And that's, uh, as you're well, well aware, that we've done a new partnership with Sunshine recycling and also uh, disposal and uh, waste management. Waste management runs a program called Waste Watch and they've uh, spent the morning an hour uh, training and certifying their drivers to identify uh, crime information, uns unsafe information, uh, problem information that they can trust transfer back to the police department or to the 911 emergency board or uh, just a uh, crime uh, watch. Crime watch. So it was an excellent program. Which was, a, was 
good, fun deal, and I, and I really look forward to us incorporating that in, in our daily lives too. So with that, we're at the next item. Very good action item, consent agenda to approve July 12th. It's five. That's correct. Yeah. I got it wrong. I got it right. It's yeah, five. I got it right. There's two. There's two numbers. The correct number is five hundred thirty-five thousand one hundred. Thank you very much. All right. There you go. All right. So five thirty-five. Yes. One thirty-eight. Correct. Second. 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 Services and authorize Mayor Peterson to enter the agreement. Second. Pardon me. Anything you want to say about this? Um, this is an on-call service contract for irrigation repairs. It's for up to ten thousand dollars, and will take us through December of 2017. Jen and I and her crew are just talking about it, and it's a huge relief when we have our system to go down. Just for the purposes of the public, this is designating Spokane Valley Herald uh, for purposes of the public understanding what the council is approving. This is a resolution identifying Spokane Valley Herald newspaper as our official newspaper. Represent approximately a 50% savings over our current spokesman. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? I hear you all in favor, raise your right hand. Spokane County, Washington, ordinance number 2318. And ordinance the city of Liberty Lake, ordinance number 2318. Mayor, this uh, ordinance relates to the moratorium. It modifies the exemptions to include R2 um, land use to not fall under the uh, moratorium that was imposed um, on property in Liberty Lake. Okay, so this is a first read. We're going to have a second read down the road, or we're going to suspend the rules on this to move that forward, or what? Um, if the council so desires, we would recommend suspending the rules and do a second read as well. Thank you. 
Open the public hearing on Comcast. We're still on a second oh, reading. Thank you, Mayor. So this, I lost my agenda, so that's my uh, that's my story. Um, don't ever go to a council meeting without an agenda, okay? <laughs> um, anyway, so this is second read ordinance on a moratorium that the council passed to suspend allowing us to accept applications for standalone apartment complexes in an M2 and R2 zone. We found that, thank you, we found that there was a type of property called R2 over in the River District that we heard from at a public hearing and the request that they be exempt to build a triplex for um, in the near term outside of the moratorium. So this is the first and second read ordinance that exempts R2 from the moratorium. So if that's, I hope, I hope that that's good. So today, right now we are taking public comment like we had a pretty good consensus over the years on what sustainable growth was. And it feels like over the past uh, two to three years specifically that we've accelerated that growth rate substantially. And I'm a Liberty Lake a business partner, resident, and I love this community. And it just is process uh, in to accelerate the zoning uh, um, exception. So, 
this is, this is the only exception to the moratorium that we're, we're really granted to date. So we kind of expect that there'll be so much um, commercial and so much residential in that area. Um, in this particular exception, um, these properties got caught up in a, in a situation where there's no opportunity for commercial in their area. It's like in your neighborhood where you live, somebody's coming in and trying to put in gas station on the corner. Nope. They wouldn't get any business because they're not on the business street or there and they were sex or a off ramp or whatever. So even if they were zoned, they probably wouldn't get any business. It's the same thing when I think of these small lots. They're not in the, a commercial area yet they were tagged with that
what people understand. But they just look at their property and say, the city has got a lot of property there. Well, the front is a park. And it's your number one priority. So if you don't have a safety, you don't have it. That's why we're here tonight. So I did want to talk about that and, and kind of put it in somewhat of perspective while we're addressing this moratorium tonight. Any other further comments? Not hearing any? We'll take a vote on the closing public hearing bill 744. Any further discussion? We'll close it with a vote. Uh, all in favor of this second read ordinance, uh, please raise your right hand. Five out of seven. It's a five. Five out of five. Four. Five. Yeah. Five. Four. Yeah. Five. Five. Four. Five. 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 You guys are amazing. <laughs> Ordinance number 230, an ordinance of the City of Liberty Lake, Washington, renewing a non-exclusive franchise agreement to Comcast Corporation organized under the laws of the State of Washington to occupy and use the public rights of way for the purpose of providing cable service to the public for a term of 10 years, subject to regulation by federal, state, Of, uh, clarification this is a franchise so that they can install their utilities in our public right of way. It has nothing to do with the business that opened on Mission Avenue. Um, the other thing is that we do generate over a hundred thousand dollars a year in um, franchise fees from this, and basically, any um, cable company or any other uh, telecom type provider would. Is that they if part of their franchise is they are going to provide at no cost to our police department, our city hall, our library, public facilities, access to their uh, new stations for purposes of emergency um, response and things like that. Mr. Mary, I moved that we open the public hearing. the general fund. Okay, and so we just came out of contract, so we're just upping the contract that we already had with them? And it was a 10-year, I'm guessing it was a 10-year contract prior? Uh, the franchise that we had have currently has expired, and so that happens quite a bit. And when the franchise expires, we continue with the terms that were in place before it expired. So this is a renewal of an existing franchise that had currently expired.
August 25th to uh, sign up take a tour of all the construction in the Simpson Valley School District. We'll, uh, we'll tour uh, four sites, the SEC here in uh, Liberty Creek the Elementary School, we'll tour that site, Evergreen Middle School, Chester and Sunrise, or Chester and Green Acres Elementary School. We've made a lot of progress on those uh, on those projects. We have two more projects that are coming out of the ground at Sunrise and at Opportunity. Elementary School has begun the first phase of their construction and um, will be in phase two uh, probably at the end of this year. So we are moving along very quickly. We've set an aggressive uh, in order to raise the next tax year dollars. And um, many of you may know that we applied and were able to receive a $28 million grant from the state of Washington to um, reduce class size through building classrooms and we're able to leverage that 20.8 million dollars to also build a new elementary school on Mission and Long and also build a north, new North Pines Middle School which is greatly needed in this community. What that allows us to do is consider before our voters in 2018 a bond that would include, um, that we believe will include, I don't want to speak uh, in front or out above my, over my skis with my board, but would include I think there's exciting time, exciting things um, continuing beyond construction. And, and your children every single day. Um, one of the one of the next things that we are venturing into is a virtual learning program. Um, we have held off on doing this until we could, uh, as a school district, provide value add. There are a lot of virtual learning programs, and until we felt we could do it better than anybody else, um, we didn't do it. And we felt we feel we're at the time where we can offer a virtual learning environment uh, better uh, than anyone. And so we will be opening that Central Valley Virtual Learning as a way to, for another pathway for our students. Um, we found that um, when we opened virtual learning, it was to our kids who wanted to excel. Take more minutes than uh, they were able to sign up or put within a day. Um, so it's an exciting time. And I said, I think you need to, you need to uh, check out Spokane Valley Tech. I think it's a smaller environment. I think it's an environment that, that your child will um, do well in. And uh, her son, Hunter Skoyan, uh, was a state champion robotic student in the state of Washington and uh, competed at the national level and was fourth at the national. So, um, those, and, and again, I think that you talk about gathering places. Uh, for me, although I'm not a citizen, Liberty Lake, I live about as close as I can to without being in the boundaries. Um, I uh, am not really talking to people and talking about what is important to them at the farmer's market. It's, it's really um, unique uh, and uh, needs to be kept in the more cities like that. Thank you, Thank you for your news. Our kids are. Again, I want to make make it evident, clear that I, when we do the middle school over on mission.
<laughs> Mayor, if you would stand up, if you will stand up and, and, and what will be the channel catfish? Is that what we're going to be? <laughs> if you'll stand in front of the seventh and eighth graders and announce that, Mayor, I think we'll go for it. <laughs> That's right. So one is a recap of our 2016 priorities. Then we're talking about Town Square. I don't know what we're going to say because the results of the election are about 15 minutes. They start coming in in about 15 minutes. So, um, Mayor, I didn't know if we wanted to invite everyone to stay a little bit after the council meeting and we can be watching the tallies um, or whatever. Um, moratorium, we are going to discuss moratorium, Greg, and over the next so we walk you through different policy and everybody um, that's in the audience that's interested in the moratorium um, retreat on August 16th. We're talking about STA priorities. I know at the Community Development Committee we had a long discussion about STA and just internal circulation. Um, how do we travel you know, within our community and what should we let STA know are our priorities. Then we're we're going to have a discussion about a draft code of ethics for elected officials, and then we'll wrap up um, with uh, Mayor Pro Tem Shane Brickner walking us through what he believes and what you believe our priorities for 2017 should be. Mayor, that concludes um, uh, the updated agenda.
And so this is an investment that you have to make in your community. And that's what it was about. so that everybody could have their questions answered so they could make an informed decision. That informed decision has just been made. So it's now 8 o'clock. There is no more campaigning. There is no more sign It's our hope. The town square is a significant piece of our community that allows us to work together and know each other. Because in the future, as we see us progress as a civilization, and to get along, and to understand, and to accept, we'll do that around the coffee, we'll do that around the ceramics, or the glass, or the wood shop, or the pool, or the dance, or the public meetings. Or the politicians come and fill the room full of hot air. I don't know. But that's what the town square is about. With that said, we're adjourned. Oh, citizen comments, right? <laughs> no. There we go. One more. One more. Got a new speech about hearing you guys. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Citizen comments. Charlie got something? Not tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we got Nadi. We're out of here. No, okay. We're adjourned. We're adjourned. Right. Okay. okay.